Okay. We'll scoot it a little this way so that my upper body can We've got full view of my upper body here in the recording. So we're gonna do upper mobility today for the shoulder, for the shoulder girdle, and little review, because I think it's always helpful to know our anatomy, <laughs> is the shoulder um, is is really the the joint. So a lot of times we like tuck our shoulder, it's the joint. And the joint is made up of your scapula and you can, or your collarbones, your clavicles, and you can touch those. And these are also known as the circuit breaker in the body because if you fall and put your arm out, what will tend to take <laughs> all that force is the collarbone. And it's the most broken bone in the body. Um, we really don't want to break with our scapula. And you don't hear of that really breaking much unless someone maybe has some like blunt force, I guess. I've never heard of anyone breaking their scapula. So your scapula is on the back of your body, also called the shoulder blade. And you can touch it by taking one hand across and feeling um, the shoulder blade and see if you can feel like the most medial point of the shoulder blade, which is at the top and it's the closest to the spine. And then just walk your fingers out and you're gonna feel the boniness of that shoulder blade at the very top. And you can walk all the way out until it almost feels like there's a rim or a ridge. And that is like the socket part of the shoulder joint. And if you then start to follow it to the top, you're touching about where then the collarbone comes in and makes the scapula. It's called the AC, uh, AC joint, the acromio curricular joint. So the acromion process of the scapula. And then take your hand under your armpit. And I worked on both of you right <laughs> here, right? And you're always like, oh, that's interesting. You're working on my armpit because my shoulder hurts. But this is really important because the shoulder blade, you're touching the shoulder blade. The shoulder blade is actually quite distal to the spine. So sometimes we think they're like really in close to the spine, but they actually wrap around. And so if you feel that the lowermost point of the shoulder blade, it's really in the side of your body. And then you can follow up towards the armpit and you're touching the edge of your shoulder blade. It's on the very lateral side of your shoulder blade. So doing side stretches to open that up, which we're gonna to do today. And then of course, some of the mobility, taking the arm across the body. It's gonna be important to open this area. This area gets really tight because we do a lot of like pulling in, pulling in, grabbing, holding, where it tends to be in this position, this rounded position. So all of this gets tight and pulls the shoulder blade up and forward. So what's important is sometimes we think about, oh, I want to be massaged back there uh, closer to the spine. It's really important to actually work those muscles to strengthen those muscles. And that's going to release some of the tension here in the body. I have found with my shoulders, with client shoulders, it feels really good to kind of be poked there on the medial part of the shoulder blade, but the, the good stuff is here. And, and getting into this area and kind of under the shoulder blade. And that area is the area of the teres minor, one of the four rotator cuff muscles. So the teres minor, and then on the top, you've got the um, supraspinatus, the spine of the shoulder blade, kind of this ridge of the shoulder blade, so it's above that spine. And then you've got the one under the subscapularis. That one's pretty hard to get to, but you're kind of getting to it when you work under that side. And then there's one that lays um, on top of the shoulder blade, the in intraspinatus, so below the spine. So you've got four <laughs> rotator cuff muscles that are holding, they come up and they form the cuff that is holding the upper arm bone into the socket. And it's pretty shallow. So unlike the hip socket, which is a really nice 
in a socket that holds the head of the femur bone. It's described more as like a saucer with like a golf ball kind of rolling in that divot. And so it's really easy for dislocation, for the ligaments to get a little bit more strict when you do a real jerky movement or, you know, the shoulder gets jerked or you reach the arm behind you, those kind of movements. So making sure that you create stability there is really important. So we're going to do some strengthening work on our bellies, lifting the arms back, right? Coming up in the cobra, that just so quick in the back, just doing that right there. Those actions are really important is learning to lift your chest up, but let the <clears throat> shoulder blades lead the way. Sometimes people come up into a back bend, but the shoulders stay forward. You see that a lot in cobra position. Mm -hmm. Really when you want to lead with the shoulder blades first, and then come up into our cobra. So we're gonna talk about that kind of, uh, the action, the act, steps of action taken when we're really coming up into that thing. So um, <clears throat> let's just take a moment to sit, take a comfortable seat so you could sit cross-legged. You could also sit kind of how I was, if it feels good to have one foot folded back. You could also sit on, the heels with like a cushion between with your feet folded back. Have we tried that? Have you tried straddling the cushion with your feet? Is that harder? No, actually, it feels pretty good, but I, you know, I still feel pretty good with it. Uh, and just my body's not awake yet. Scoot all the way back to that. Yeah, and you can have the knees apart too. That's totally fine. Yeah, fine as well. Okay. So there you go, yeah, just keep it floating a little bit. So find a position that allows you to sit for just a moment so that we can settle into the breath. So the breath is our foundation for the practice. <laughs> and learning to sit with the breath and just be with what is can help us to cope with all the crap it comes up in our lives and just like makes you crazy, right? Because we can't control other people. We can't really control our circumstances. But what we can control in the circumstance is our breath. So find a comfortable position. Just notice, like, if you're uncomfortable, can you just notice that you're uncomfortable? Or if you're sitting and you notice, like, wow, I'm uncomfortable, or maybe there's no sensation at all. Maybe you're just here. And find a position where you can be still. You notice the sounds around you this morning. Letting your body get really heavy. So you might feel the pull of gravity pulling you down. And that's when we're upright, what we're trying to combat with good posture. So you can just let yourself kind of come to gravity. And then begin to feel your spine lengthen upward. You might feel how the pelvis tips forward, chest lifts. And then there's this length from the back of the skull. In fact, take your palm, take your palm today, place it on the back of your head, right at the round, this round part of your head, and press your head back into your hand. And then as if you're going to take, lift your hand up, taking the back of your skull with you. So the chin drops ever so slightly and just press your head back into your hand. It's uncomfortable on your shoulder, maybe switch arms. And then see if you can keep that action in the head of it, gently pressing back and lifting up. And then find the balance of um, succumbing to gravity where you're able to relax through your skeletal system, but you feel the support of your musculature system. Or you're going to relax into your muscular by feeling the support of your bones being stacked. So of course there's a balance here 
and finding that right effort where you're not overexerting and you're not underexerting. And then settle into the breath. Take some deep breaths in and out. Feel free to sigh. Relax your jaw, relax your face. Four of our sense organs here, face, relaxing the jaw, and the tongue. Relax the eyes, sight, without relaxing the inner ears. And around the bridge of the nose. And then that fifth sense organ is the whole skin bag. And so we can soften through the skin. We'll use the breath as our point of focus today. And exhaling completely. And then notice that moment when you start to inhale. And then follow the length of the inhalation. Notice the very top of the inhale where you're completely full. Notice the beginning of the exhale, the descent, that feeling kind of like you're sinking or falling. And then the bottom of the exhale layer empty. There's a moment there. Breathing in and out through your nose, the beginning, the length of the inhale. The top of the inhale, there's a moment of pause, the beginning of the exhale, the length of the exhale, and then that moment of pause of emptiness. So stay with your breath here. Notice the different sensations in your body of each part of the breath. Feel a little bit of resistance <laughs> with the breath. And it seems like when you're empty, that sensation, the eagerness to breathe in, and then resist the urge to just take a deep gasp of breath in, but slowly inhale. Feel the fullness, feel that pressure building, and then the release of the pressure, and slowly release the breath. So you're strengthening the lungs and the heart through this practice. You might notice that naturally the breath gets longer and smoother as you stay here. You might also know that naturally the mind wanders. And so you spring it back. Sometimes I visualize like an ellipse or you know, like a, a track, like a running track. There's like the length of the side, there's the transition, there's the length along the other side, and the transition. If you can continue to work with the breath and scrub away any of the harsh edges around the breath. And that might involve softening the throat so there's no sound. When we engage through the throat using bondo, using uh, more sound, it creates heat in the body, which can be useful. 
Right now, I want you to feel the coolness, the cooling effect helps to cool the heat in our nervous system. Helps our body settle into the parasympathetic response, which allows us to heal, to find more ease. Three more breaths. Can you find more softness? Keep the attentiveness to the breath. And at the base of your next exhale, bring the palms together to the heart. And we will join in the sound of three ohms together. Give a slow breath in. Center and coming to lie on your back. So you can break it towards the top of your mat. How's temperature? Is it okay with the cool mm -hmm. breeze coming in this morning? Feels like fall. It does. <laughs> we got all the seasons. Wow. Good. So come down to your back. Yep. And just allow yourself to land. Do a little bit of uh, adjusting so you're comfortable. And then Notice where it feels most comfortable to rest. Maybe the palms are up, maybe the palms are face down. And for the practice today, it'll be helpful if you have room 100, or like 360 degrees around your head if you're practicing at home. And then let yourself succumb to gravity. So the beauty of the somatic practice is that we get to use gravity for our benefit. So we can let go of any, we can try to let go of any tension that we may be holding in our shoulders, any muscular engagement to hold ourselves upright. We can let go, we're just letting go of the weight of the body resting into the floor. Notice any sensations arising in your body this morning. The growls of the belly. Anything that's really apparent, just if you enjoying kind of a quick glance, sensing of the body, what's really glaring. We're gonna begin to notice the 
more of the minutia. And since we're working with the shoulder girdle and more of the upper body today, as we scan the body, we're gonna spend a little bit more time there. So let's start at our feet. There's the weight of your heels. Begin to move the awareness up to the knees. And to the hips. See any sensations there? And if it's uncomfortable to lay here with the legs straight, you could definitely bend the knees. Taking the feet a little wider apart and letting the knees come together. And then begin to let your awareness travel up the spine as if you could go vertebrae by vertebrae. Twenty nine vertebrae, five in the sacrum, back of the pelvis, five of the lumbar, and then the twelve of the thoracic where the ribs attach. And our thoracic rib cage is integrated with our shoulder girdle because the shoulder girdle floats on the upper thoracic area. And there's not an actual joint, so there's not like two bones connecting, but it's thought of as the scapular thoracic joint because the shoulder blades rotate and glide and slide on the back ribs. So we're gonna be thinking about the thoracic spine today. And then move your awareness up into the neck. And with this body scan, we're just noticing we're not necessarily moving. Noticing sensations and then move your awareness out from the sternum across the collarbones and then to the back, shoulder blade area, scapula, and down to the arms, the elbows, and even all the way up through the hands. So we're gonna be thinking about opening up these energy lines from the fingers into the sternum and the energy lines through the arm into the back of the body as well. One more big breath in and out here. And then if the legs are straight, go ahead and bend the knees and take the arms out in a T position. And then bend the elbows maybe just slightly or to 90 degrees, if that's comfortable in the shoulder. We're gonna start by moving the spine. So as you inhale, feeling the pelvis tip forward, you're gonna be creating this space under the low back, like a little bridge, small bridge. And then as you exhale, flatten the back, feel the tailbone top. And as you inhale, arch the back. And as you exhale, tuck the tailbone. And I want you to feel yourself rolling and rocking on the lumbar and the sacrum. So noticing the pressure points on the back body. We start with the breath because then we're using the breath in the practice. It's a very slow, rhythmic practice. Sometimes we do shaking and jostling, but for the most part, we're getting into the quality of water here. Cool, moist, fluid. So find the fluidity of your movement. So we take out kind of the harsh edges. Let the breath find the cracks in the groove. So it's really filling. 
the body. Feel that watery quality. Like the pool, perhaps inflammation in the body, perhaps our hot heads. And as you exhale and flatten the back, tip the chin away from the chest. Head is on the floor. So you're opening up through the muscles, the front of the throat. Attach from the jaw down to collarbones. As you arch your back, take the chin to the chest. Again, head stays on the floor. And as you exhale, flatten the back, tip the chin towards the ceiling. And as you inhale, arching the back, and chin the chest. Really great for the neck. So the muscles of the neck actually come down and attach to the collarbones. And muscles of the back of the neck attach to the top of the shoulder blades. So the upper traps come up. And as you do this, you can apply just a little bit of pressure in the back of the skull. So as the chin comes to the chest, just gently press the head into the floor. Hold for a moment. And then release, and as you exhale, flatten the back, dip the chin to the ceiling, and then just gently press the back of the skull into the floor. Hold for a moment. And then switch. And pause. I love this movement. There's all different variations you can do. And so we're going to play around with some of the different variations of the arms today. So come back and just rest. Let your body land. Pull your head left to right. So take away any of the pinning of the head. Easy neck. And then squeeze your shoulder blades together. And notice as you do this, the chest puffs up. The back is going to naturally arch. Almost like you're doing the very beginning of a pull-up, kind of like the middle of that pull-up. And then lift the forearms up off the floor and start to press the forearms together so the elbow and the palms come together at the same time. And your upper arm bones are perpendicular to the floor and your forearms are parallel to the floor. And press the palms and the forearms together. And can you feel how the shoulder blades, in fact, if you just take one hand off here for a second, your shoulder blades are actually off of the floor. Take your left hand and touch your right shoulder blade. It is completely off the floor. And then slowly open the arms and squeeze the shoulder blades together. Now press the back of the arms, the back of the hands into the floor. Inhale here, and as you exhale, pick the arms up and press the elbows and the palms together. And see, get the elbows and the palms to meet at the same time. Squeeze, inhale, open, and get the back of the arm to meet the floor with the back of the hands at the same time. Inhale. Exhale. Now flatten your back as you press the forearms together. Notice that your chin is going to want to move up a little bit, like it's pointing towards the wrists. And as you inhale, press the back of the arms together, take the chin towards the chest. Exhale, flatten the back. Look toward your fingertips. Inhale, open, look towards your chest. Press the back of the arms towards the floor. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Exhale, keep going.
Find your rhythm. It's going to be different than mine. Mm. And then bring the arms back down. Extend the arms so they're straight, lower them slightly, and stretch the legs out. And then the rest. We're going to do snow angels next. So if you can remember as a kid, I never was a lady in the snow and made snow angels. The lower body is going to stay. Um, still here but we're going to do the movements of the arms and we're going to introduce it's either a view for some or introduction if you are uh, watching this for the first time of the rotation of the upper arm bone the humerus bone in the shoulder socket so right now we're in a neutral position the arms are about 45 degrees away from the body palms are up i want you to turn your palms down to the floor as you slide your arms in towards the body. So now your arms are right alongside your body. Your thumb is brushed up against your buttock, your hip, and the palms are flat. This is internal rotation. So the arms rolled into the body. And now as you sweep the arms away from the body, turn the palms up. This is neutral. Now keep sweeping the arms up overhead and turn the palms to face each other. This is external rotation. Let's see if you can feel how that feels in your shoulder. It's a little sticky in my right. And then sweep your arms back out to the side, palms turn up, and then they turn down to the floor as the palms come right alongside the body. So now see if you can find that sweeping motion with your breath and with the rotation of your arms so it's smooth and coordinated. As the arms reach up overhead, flex the feet and reach. And then relax the legs, sweep the arms down. Notice as the arms internally rotate that the shoulder comes up off the floor a little bit. Kind of internally rotating the arms and hugging the arms into the body. And then sweep the arms out, feel the shoulder blades move in towards each other kind of midway, then as you reach your arms up, those arms come up with the shoulder blades. So the shoulder blades are reaching up now along with the arms and then sweep the arms down. And then find a rhythm in your movements. As the arms come overhead, let's flex the feet. So you're reaching through the heels, reaching through the fingertips. And as the arms come down, you can relax the legs. Let's do that with the next exhale. Inhale, arms will reach up, flex, feet reach, stretch. And then exhale, arms come down. Internally rotate the arms. It's almost like your palms are facing now away from the body. And then rest. Let the arms come to 45 degrees and just let go. Now sweep the arms out to a T position. We're going to do the internal and external rotation of the arm, but more in a static position. So the arms are not going to be sweeping up and down. Let's bend the knees. Let's review the internal and external rotation. So twist the arms so the palms face towards the floor. The arms stay in a T position and keep twisting the arms. So the pinky finger side of your hand will come up off the floor a little bit. And, and then turn your palms to face up to the sky. This is neutral. Twist the arms the other way, external rotation. Feel how the shoulder blades press into the floor and your back wants to arch a little bit. And then release the arms to neutral and rest. 
internally rotate the arms. Feel how the shoulder blades roll up off the floor. You feel a little hunchy in your shoulders. Your chin might jut out a bit. And then come to neutral pause. Twist the arms the other way. Feel how the chin naturally wants to move towards the chest. And if you do that, you might find even more rotation. And then rest. Okay, now we're going to twist one arm in one direction and one arm in the other direction. Let's start by internally rotating the left arm, externally rotating the right, and look at the right arm as you do this. Twist those arms and then release to neutral palms up. Let's go the other direction, turn the right palm down and keep twisting it a little bit more. So that right shoulder blade rolls up off the ground. Left arm externally rotates, we look over at that left arm. Now left elbow is gonna be up off the floor. It's kind of like creating a bridge with that left arm. It's because the arms aren't exactly straight. And then exhale, release. Do that once more to each side. Look at the right arm. Left arm internally rotates, right arm is going to come up off the floor a little bit. Exhale, release. Now the arm, I'm talking about the elbow joint, the palms stay, hands stay on the floor. And let's go to the left. And we're looking at that left hand, it's an external rotation, right arm to internal rotation. Come back and rest. Take the feet a little bit wider. Drop the knees to the left. Internally rotate the left arm. The left arm rolls towards the knees. Right arm rolls away from the knees and look over with the right hand. Take a deep breath in here. Feel your back arch. Exhale, come back to neutral. Knees towards the ceiling and rest. Twist the arms. Right arm internally rotates towards the knees. Left arm away. Reach and twist. Exhale. Back to neutral rest. Okay, on your own. Knees to the left, look to the right. Exhale, release. If you get confused, it's okay. If it hurts, back off. But really, if you end up switching stuff around, it's not that big of a deal. It's gonna just be a different way to move. As the knees fall to the side, you might want to stack the knees or pull that top knee in. That can feel good for the back. As the knees fall to the right, I'm just bringing my left knee in a little bit closer towards my right elbow. As my knees fall to the left, I'm bringing the top knee, the right knee in a little bit more towards my left elbow. <sighs> the next time the knees fall to the right, we're gonna hold a gentle pose here. Arms can just stay in a T position, relax, palms up. And we'll take a few breaths. Let the weight of the legs be heavy. If the legs slide out a little bit or lower, that's fine. Let gravity hold the body. See if you can let go of all muscular engagement. Just hang out here. Top knee bite me up a little bit. That's okay. And then bring the knees into the chest and rock over to the other side. We want to just make sure we're not, we don't have any pain in our bodies. If you feel pain, what is your body telling you that you need to do to not be hanging in that painful position? Mm 
And then bring the knees into the chest. Give yourself a squeeze. Rock a little bit there on the back. Hug the knees in. So you move into this flexion in the spine. Keep rocking left to right. And then pause just so you're just slightly tilted to the right. Hanging on to the right QL area. Take a deep breath into the low back. Quadratus lumborum, lumbar, lower back. Switch to the left. Hang out there for a moment. Breathe into the left lumbar. Mm. Back to center. Pause. So option here, this feels really good. This is a jostling movement, kind of a shaky and rocking movement, which can be really good to create this softness, this loose fluidity in the body. So option, cross the ankles, knees are in, interlace the fingers, hold the head, elbows in, and then just lift the head up off the floor slightly. Keeping the knees together, start to swish your feet back and forth. So you're wagging your tail. Swish your feet back and forth, not rocking your pelvis. You're swishing your feet back and forth. Take your feet left and right and left and right. Fast, fast, fast. There it is. Upper body stays kind of still. It's going to wiggle a little bit. We're moving our torso left and right, left and right, left and right, left and right. Keep going. This core work too. You're going to start to feel your core fired up here. Do you feel like you can lift your chest up a little bit more? You can. And then release them all together. Big stretch out. And relax. Feel tingles, heat. Pull the seat through the body. Hmm. And from here, we're going to do our best earthworm impression and try to roll over to the belly without too much movement. That's where I was going to put my hair up just so it's not in my face as I'm sharing with you. Let's see if you can just roll over, keeping your head low to the floor. And then stack your palms under the forehead and relax. Elbows are wide. If this is uncomfortable in the shoulder, so having that arm kind of at that 45 degree angle, bring the arms down to the cactus position and turn your head to one side. Feel the weight of your body on the floor. Relax the legs, relax the feet. If your head is turned to one side, turn it to the other side if you're in that cactus position. If you're in the neutral position, palms stacked, you stay there. If it did hurt with your shoulders in the position where your palms are stacked, I find sometimes if I keep them there in the goalpost position for a little bit, I can then bring them here. So our next move, wherever you're at, arms and goalpost or palm stack, we're going to tuck all 10 toes under as you're pushing through your feet. Lift your knees, squeeze your butt, and then lift your head up off the floor. So if the head was turned to the side, you just bring it to a neutral position and you're using the back here. So the palms can gently press and then come down and rest. If your head was turned to one side, turn it to the other side. Tuck your toes, lift your knees up, squeeze your bottom, lift your head up, feel the low back working. Feel the shoulder blades draw together and rest. Inhale, tuck the toes, 
lift, use your back muscles. If you're in this cactus position, you can gently press into the forearms, into the palms, squeeze the shoulder blades together and the forearms will lift up. The palms are stacked, you can do the same. Elbows just slide in a little bit. And then exhale. And slide and rest. So that's why we put a blanket down on top of our yoga mat or a beach towel, something that allows us to slide and glide here. Because as you tuck your toes, the knees lift, the butt, buttock muscles engage, the elbows will slide in a little bit, chest lifts. If you're in the goalpost position again, the elbows might come up off the floor a bit. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Exhale. Okay, a few more. Your own rhythm, your own time, and as much time in between repetitions to rest. Squeeze your bottom. Last one here. Let's come down to rest. Hmm. We're going to bring our arms alongside of the body. Turn your head to one side and rest. Palms will be up. Right alongside the body. The shoulders are going to slump forward from this round position there. It might not be that comfortable. And then we're going to squeeze the shoulder blades together. So the head hasn't lifted yet, but your shoulders, upper arm are going off the floor. Reach the arms long. Bring the head to neutral. And then lift the arms up. Lift the chest up and reach back. And then exhale. Release the head. Rest. Turn that to the other side. The elbows will bend a little bit. Inhale, reach, lift the chest. Tops of the feet will stay on the floor. They might lift up a little bit. That's an option too. And come down, turn that to the other side. Reach, lift. And release. Make sure those shoulders are lifting up. If you're doing this at home, you could maybe even set up your camera so you can watch. Make sure your shoulders aren't slumping forward. Shoulder blades squeezing, palms face each other, reaching back. And make sure you forward as you lift up. Look forward, Cindy. There you go. And then look up. Look forward. Yeah, there you go. Look up. Head is in neutral. If it hurts to look forward, look down. But keep lifting your sternum. Squeeze shoulder blades together. Pause here. Up. Breathe. And then come all the way down. And rest. Whenever it feels best to rest. Slide the right knee up. Hang up. There's a lot for the low back. So it's going to get a little stretch to the low back. You can turn your head to one side. Slide up like that, slide the other leg like that. Press up onto the forearms, press up onto the knees, and we're going to incorporate a little restorative stretch here. So, options to so child's pose toes are, I'm going to turn to the side for this one, toes are pointed, toes down. 
Or you can have your toes tucked. Or you can have your butt up a little bit off the floor and was reaching forward. That is going to be more intense on the shoulders with the bottom up. You can also put a bolster behind the calves and sit on that. And then look at your hands. Come up onto your fingertips. And your arms are straight. So arms straight. Reach forward and then lower your head so your head's right between your upper arm bones. Your head is off the floor. And then once again, look at your arms and look at the inner elbow and shine the inner elbow, the creases of the elbows up towards the sky. So you can turn the creases of the elbows up to the sky. Fingertips on the floor, there you go. Mm -hmm. That's it. And then lower. Woo. Feeling that between the shoulder blades at all? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then walk your arms over to one side, to the left or to the right. Hold there. Keep reaching. You can put your palms down now. Keep reaching out through the fingertips. Now we're getting that stretch to the side. That arm pit area. And then walk to the other side. Long deep breaths. And then come out of it, stack the palms under the forehead or make fists. Tuck your toes if you need to get up off your knees a little bit. And the next one we're going to do is we're going to floss our shoulder blades. So if this feels just absolutely awful to be on the knee, you can come down to your belly and do a variation of it. I'm going to step on my knees and we're going to come to our fingertips. Our arms are at this 90 degree angle. Make sure your hands aren't in too close because it's going to create tension in the shoulders. The arms are out wide, elbows 90 degrees. And then take your right shoulder to the floor as your left shoulder blade pulls back and look under the left arm. Come to neutral. Go to the other side. Just breathe easy. Oftentimes we pair the movement with the inhale because the inhale can bring in space. Sometimes I like to exhale with this one because it allows me to go a little deeper into that twisting movement. Make sure you're dipping your shoulder to the floor like you're trying to put the front of your shoulder on the floor. Head move around a little bit. Ooh. Come to rest. You can tuck the hands in towards the knees or stack the hands under the head. And then just let yourself roll on to your side and over on to your back. Feet flat on the floor. Interlace your fingers behind the head. Rest here. That feels uncomfortable. Keep your arms up by your sides. Three breaths here. Now as you inhale, see if you can send that breath right between the shoulder blades. As you exhale, soften. Soften your toes, soften your face. Inhale, press the elbows into the floor. As you exhale, tightly laced into your 
Locking fingers, you're gonna keep the hands on the heads and squeeze the forearms in towards each other like you're trying to touch the elbows together and then kick the head up and curl up into a crunch. And then slowly come down, forearms hug the head. Elbows open up, tip the chin towards the ceiling. Exhale, elbows hug in, forearms squeeze the head, kick the head up, curl into a crunch. Slowly come down. You're stretching those muscles between the shoulder blades as we exhale, and we're engaging them as we inhale. Exhale, curl up. Inhale. Next time you curl up just a little bit to your left, keep the feet flat. Yeah, and slowly open the elbows. It's imperative that you squeeze your forearms into your head with this one, because we're trying to open up the upper back. We're trying to get into the muscles of the upper back here. You want to get the mobility of the shoulder blades on the thoracic spine. Elbows open on the inhale, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Elbows in, hug the head, and pinch the head with the front. Right through the center a couple times after you're satisfied with your twisting variations. Maybe even the knees come in. You want to get a little bit more energy here as your head comes down. You could shoot the legs out 45 degrees. Last one, uh, the other hand, and release all together. And then let's wiggle our whole body on the floor. Let's etch a sketch with the shoulders, with the legs, with the arms. And let go. And a little bit more twisting in. So bend the knees and we're gonna roll over to the right side. If you'd like, if it's hard for you to keep the legs stacked and the arms in a T position, you can take your bolster, a cushion, a folded up towel, a, a pillow between your knees or your shins. Arms are in a T position, knees are to the right. We'll go over at the left arm and sweep it up towards the sky. And the palms will then stack and rest. Now reach the left palm past the right palm. And then brush the left palm across the right hand, across the forearm, across the upper arm, across the shoulder, across the chest. And then extend the left arm out to the side. Look at the left hand, sweep it up to the sky, reach. Then you're going to stretch through the side of your neck. Reach the left hand past the right, and then brush. Try to open up. Pause here. Rest. Rest the legs. Rest the upper body. Sweep the left arm up to the sky. Reach. Head roll. And brush. Open up. 
On your own, slow it down. Next time you end up in that twist, hang out there. Give it a twist. I'm on a sideline position. Let me twist. There you go. And then grab your prop and roll to the other side. Okay, in that twisting position, notice what it feels like here in the very beginning. Tuck those knees up. Look over to the right hand. Sweep the right palm up. Reach, reach past the left hand. And then right palm brushes across the left palm, arm, chest, and you're in that twisting position. Mm, sweep and reach. Reach, 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 reach. And brush. Let the brush be soft and easy as you return. Reach through the fingers, reach through the palm. Active arm is reaching. It's not a soft noodle. As you breath, it softens. Rest. And then activate, reach. Inhale. Inhalation is the active position. Exhale is the soft brush. And a moment of pause. A couple more. Sometimes when I reach, I like to think about reaching out through different fingers. Like if I'm going to really reach through my pinky finger here, causes a little bit of that radial deviation. It feels a little different. And if I reach and lead more through my thumb, causes ulnar deviation. So it's like the pinky finger tips. Mm. Next time you find yourself in that twist position, pause. Notice if there's any changes for you and how this feels. And then come out of it slightly, hold your cushion and come. To your back if you were using a prop or a cushion between the knees. Bring the knees in. That's a lot of for the back again. So give yourself a little rock, a little squeeze. And then take the legs up into the air. Bend the knees. Double hamstring pendiculation. Take the legs up into the air. Press through the heels. Flex the feet. Get into those hamstrings. If the legs don't go straight, it's okay. And then bend the knees. Legs going fairly perpendicular, flex, circle the ankles now, just getting those legs up a little bit. Turn the toes in and out, turn the whole leg in and out, turn the whole foot in and out, turn the toes in like you're trying to point the toes towards each other, turn the toes away from each other, Charlie Chaplin, we're going to knock your heels together. Mobility in the hips, super simple. Bend the knees and a couple more stretch and bend. Bend the knees in. Set the feet down. Big stretch. Lock the thumbs together. Each. 
and then release back into your civilian jaw and rest. And ending here, letting go completely. Now go yourself around so you're as comfortable as can be. yourself enjoy this position. The body really enjoys position, this position. The mind, not so much. Now, if your body doesn't enjoy this position because your back hurts, bend your knee and set the feet flat. Or you could even, maybe if that's just totally uncomfortable for different reasons, one could be, you know, a woman who's pregnant doesn't feel good to lay on this position, or even sometimes during our cycle, it doesn't feel good. So you could come to a side one position. But <coughs> ideally, if you can lay in that position, it is really wonderful for the body. Anatomically, it's the neutral position where all the joints and rest, creating the space between them, the joints of the back, the vertebrae, shoulder, hips. But at times it is not felt good for me to rest with this, and there's different ways you can support yourself. Let yourself go. The heaviness of the legs, like if you even wanted to lift your legs up, you couldn't. They feel so heavy. Same with the arms and the head. If you're practicing at home or at a later time, Stay like this even longer. Another option would even be to scoot into a wall or a couch or an ottoman and elevate the legs to that 90 degree position with support or <clears throat> resting the calves on the couch or ottoman. And when you're ready to get up, you'll slowly bend the knees, set the feet flat. And take your time as slow as possible. And roll to your side and come up to sit and find the same position you started in. Same exact position. The bolster is supporting you if you're on a bolster. But you can notice some shift in the way it feels through your upper body. I feel like almost like my upper body is suspended here. Like it's draped over a balloon. I feel a lot lighter. It's easier to sit like this. But what's it feel like in your body? It's chilly. Yeah. I'm just being here for a couple minutes. Let your palms rest heavy on the thighs. Your jaw goes slack for a moment if you like such a tongue. Okay. And then close your mouth to keep your tongue resting. Lips touching. But no tension in the jowls, no tension in the eyes. Mm.
in the breath, having a circular, the elliptical nature of the breath. The stillness of the somatic practice will often leave that residue at the end of wanting to be still. And you could even possibly feel that in your breath, like at the base of the exhalation, you want to just linger there a little bit longer. The palms, gather to the heart center, and then head to the hands, and then release the hand, open the eyes. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.